You ready to talk books? be limiting myself to only books that I have read this year that were published within 2019. I'm also publishing this list two weeks before the end of the year so I do acknowledge I'll probably read another maybe dozen books or so before the actual 2019 is over but these are the books that I have read so far. I typically actually don't buy that many books on my own and any books from like the new year that I normally read, I get from the library. And that's just because I have, if I had a hazard, I guess I'd say well over a thousand books in my house. And there's only so much I can buy, <laughs> especially on a grad student's salary. So a lot of my favorite books do come from publishers or they come from authors. But I do want to make it very clear that this is not a sponsored video. Any books that are from publishing companies or from authors in this video were given to me as a free copy in exchange for an honest review on Goodreads. So once I did that, my obligation to the company was done. Anything else is something of my own choice and because I really, honestly, I enjoyed the book and I had so much fun and I want to share with you my favorite books of the year. Now to put everyone into perspective, so far this year I have read 308 books and that is almost a book a day. I try and read as much as I can and I try and like pick out what I want to read and ask publishing companies but I might not have gotten to your favorite series. As a note, have not read Call Down the Hawk yet. I'm buddy reading that one with my sister. So in all theory that one would definitely make the list. I just haven't read it yet. Okay. So, best books 2019. I'm going to start off with three honorable mentions. First off, we have The Favorite Sister, Darling Rose Gold, and Aisha at Last. I do actually have a physical copy of Aisha at Last, but my bookshelves are a bit of a disaster. I'm going to be doing a video all about my books. I figure I'll find it then. <laughs> This one was sent to me by Simon & Schuster and I really enjoyed this book. So Favorite Sister is a, it's almost like reality TV in a book. So we have a group of girls and they're supposed to be like these pot shop millennials. They're supposed to be like these big shots doing all kinds of companies and there's this reality show centered around them. And one of them gets murdered and you just kind of get sucked into all this drama. I didn't notice that not all of my Goodreads fans love this one. It was, it was almost like a hit or miss one, but I thought it was that kind of that, that trashy lit that you just like, oh yes, the drama. Plus there was an actual murder and I was trying to figure out the clues, so I had a ton of fun between these pages. This one was sent to me by Berkeley Publishing, as well as Aisha at Last was also sent to me by Berkeley. This one actually hasn't come out yet, so I guess that, that could be why I put it in honorable mentions. So Darling Rose Gold is a excellent Munchausen, Munchausen by proxy story. Patty is Rose Gold's mother and she has Munchausen by proxy, which means it's a medical condition where um, a parent will make their child sick for the attention it gives to the parent. Eventually Rose Gold figured it out sent her mother to jail for five years and her mother comes out and Rose Gold picks her up. And the whole town is absolutely reeling because how could you pick up your literal torturer for years? And then you get to watch the two characters play off of each other. I loved it and I cannot wait for this one to get published. Aisha at Last is a Pride and Prejudice retelling with a Muslim Canadian heroine. And I am a huge fan of Pride and Prejudice. It's one of my absolute favorite books. So any retelling of it, I'm always up to see what that's like. I really enjoyed the play of the two main characters. Their 
families were absolutely ridiculous in the best way possible in the way only Pride and Prejudice remakes are. So I had a lot of fun. It was also up for a Goodreads Choice Award, which uh, should have won. <laughs> This one was sent to me by Simon & Schuster. This one was also a very polarizing book and I found a lot of people either hated it or they loved it. And for me, I loved it. Okay, this one follows a researcher and well, researcher, so of course I liked it. But it follows a mother who is also a researcher, Molly, and she does, she's an almost like archeologist who does a dig in this like place that they call the pit. And what was really interesting is like as she's doing this dig, there's all these things that just don't match up. Like there's um, plant fossils that seem nowhere else on earth or a Bible, but all of the pronouns are she. So just a lot of like little odd things. And all of a sudden these odd things start following her home. I know a lot of criticism is that it's a little bit ambiguous, but honestly, that's why I loved it. I love the fact that I had no idea whether or not these things were real or if they're all in her head. And I was like, holy mackerel, I just couldn't stop reading this. And this one I finished so incredibly quickly. I could not believe how fast I finished this one. The Bookish Life of Nina Hill. I mean, uh, I love this book. So this one was sent to me by Berkeley Publishing. So thank you so much. I really, I loved it. Like I knew going in based off of the cover that I was going to love this one, but I just loved it so much. And it's one of those books that just makes you smile. We follow Nina and she is an only child and she spent her entire life with her mother and a um, kind of like a live-in nanny. Gross, Squamish. Oh bud, why you gotta be so gross? <laughs> All right, so in this one we follow Nina Hill. Her mother never gave a single word about her father and then she finds out she actually has a family and that her father has had three wives. Each one had children. I really loved her character. Uh, I've never really identified so closely as I did. It was a really fun book. I really enjoyed atmosphere. I loved the reading and Nina works in a bookshop. I want to work in a bookshop. All right, next one we're hitting is Daisy Jones and the Six. This one I actually read via audiobook, which is an experience I highly recommend. Daisy Jones and the Six follows a fictional band set in like the late 70s. They start to form this absolutely amazing band and everyone's talking about the cusp of greathood and it all gets snatched away. And it's a big controversy and big mystery of that world. So we find out through interviews and press clippings what happened, how the band grew, and how it fell apart. And honestly, never felt so much regret that a band didn't exist. There's just something about the way the characters were portrayed, their personalities and snapshots and how incredibly well it all like fit together. It created a masterpiece. And at the end of the audiobook, they actually have the instrumental version of one of the songs. And I did not realize an instrumental, it was instrumental because I kept waiting for the vocals because I just, I wanted to know what the song sounded like so bad. And I just never got it and I was so disappointed. <laughs> it's really good though. And I haven't read a lot of historical fiction that I've really like loved and this is one of the very first ones where I actually loved it. This one was sent to me by Celadon Books and I absolutely loved it. 
We have Tom Kennedy and his son. They both moved to a new town following the death of his wife. There's this like local legend of the Whisper Man, which is there is this man who would whisper at the doors of children's houses and try and get them, and they were never seen again. The police caught the killer. However, as soon as Tom moves to town, someone begins whispering at the door. I thought this one was really well put together. The pacing was excellent. And I had a really great time between these pages. And so this one was sent to me by Ace Publishing, so thank you very much for that. I much appreciate it. And it follows two competing storylines. One, and I'm gonna butcher these names because I've only read them and I have no idea what the pronunciation is. One follows Tazara and Jekrin, and the other one follows Ona. Ona's storyline is a um, almost like a Hermione-esque character. She's always been very smart. She's always been very good at her, um, it's, a, it's like magic that they use like mathematical terms for it. So she's always been very good at her parameters. However, when she tried to apply for like the wizarding school, they're like, oh wait, you're a woman, so no. <laughs> and then she's like, well, I'm not gonna accept this, no. And she decides to set off and try and a new school. Tazara is a troll and she is half human. And she looks a little bit like a very tall, very buff human male, though she very clearly looks female, female within her species. I absolutely love her like I've gushed about this on Goodreads already quite a bit but there's just something about her character and her gruffness and the way she just carries herself that really like brought me into this story so Tazara finds a human male and he's quite a bit smaller than her though he's like regular human size and she kind of thinks like oh he'd be a cute partner and there's like this really sweet love that starts to blossom. And one of the problems with this book actually is that I loved the love too much. So even though both halves of the story were both very well written, I was just like, Zara, Jacqueline, more. <laughs> and um, I really hope that this author continues this and I think it was a, an absolutely excellent debut novel. And you wanna show the world your reindeer? This is actually from an author friend. <laughs> so he would like to say thank you for thinking of me. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I picked this one up. Um, this one was actually sent to me by Berkeley Publishing. I requested it because my friend Tucker, the reader, he read it and holy spit, his review was good. I loved it. And then I picked this one up and oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't typically read horror and I don't typically read scary books, but I think I need to start. Cause this one, the way the author just kind of like layered in those aspects, oh, it was good. It was just the right level of spook. Um, shoot. This one's actually coming out in 2020 as well, but this one was so good that I think I'm just gonna keep it on the list. I think I'm just, uh, yeah. <laughs> so this one was um, sent to me from Rhett and Link, and we actually saw them in person, and I'll have a photos of that up there. I am a longtime fan of the Rhett and Link. I have been watching them since my first college days, so that, when I, that was when I was an undergrad and I was getting my degree in biochemistry. I remember when I was younger, my sister and I were six years apart, and we were always like butting heads. And then I found Rhett and Link on YouTube and I made her watch it with me, and it became kind of a thing for us where like, whenever we would get together, we would watch Rhett and Link. So Rhett and Link became this thing for us to bond over, despite the distance. And that's actually something that we continue to this day. So Lost Clauses of Lee Creek, 
I would definitely say being a fan helps enhance the enjoyment of this one because it's based off of Rhett and Link's life. So the main characters are Rex and Leaf and they live in a town called Blee Creek which is very similar to Bowie's Creek where they actually grew up in. In this story there's a school where like all the bad kids go and Rex and Leaf's best friend gets sent there and they have to find a way to save her. But for me, I really enjoyed this one and I had a lot of fun with it. And if you're a Rhett and Link fan or if you're kind of curious about them, I think it holds pretty darn well. Okay, so as a confession, this one was sent to me by Simon and Schuster and they contacted me over Goodreads and they said, hey, would you be interested in reading this book? And I actually hadn't read the first two. They were on the list to read, but I hadn't gotten to them yet. But when I saw they were offering me an ARC of this book, I was like, yes, I will read them all for that. <laughs> Once I accepted this book, I had like about, I would say maybe a month or so. And I used my husband's free Audible credits <laughs> and I got myself copies of the first and the second book. And I just like blew through this series. And I was so glad to hit the toll. This one was such a good book. One thing I love is like, this is one of the big boy books that actually lives up to the pages where it's like, I think this one is worth all 627 pages. Like, I don't know if there's really anything I would cut out. I love the way the author just like layers so many things on top of each other and then you're just like holy crap at the very end when like everything comes together and you're like just like your mind's blown it's absolutely blown so like this one i was just like ah, it did not disappoint so oh my gosh can you believe both of these were published in the same year? Because I really, I can't. Queen of Nothing, Wicked King. I'm gonna tie these for a second. This one might have a slight edge just because I was so excited what to happen, what was happening with this series. This series, so it follows a human girl who grows up in Fairyland. She has been always educated with like the royal fairies She's always known that she is not one of them and she will never be one of them. So it's a point of contention, but the thing is she never backs down from a challenge. Meanwhile, the Prince of the Fairies is actually Cardon and he is known for being extremely cruel, hence the title here. So um, by the second book, by the second book he becomes king. But then she becomes the queen of nothing and then this whole book is like her finding her way back. I'm a huge fan of fairies. I'm a huge fan of wicked creatures and like dark twisty tales and I love all the details Holly Black throws in the stories. So actually my number one of the year dark down oh my gosh like this one killed me in the best way possible oh gosh where do I even begin so Mia's entire life she's trained as an assassin to kill her father's killers and at the beginning of the third book she finds that her brother's alive and he was in the care of her father's killer she decides that she's still gonna go through with the killing and there's this huge destiny where she's supposed to save the world and she's just like, nah, I'm good. I don't wanna do that. I don't really feel like it. And it was refreshing. I love it that she curses. I love it that she is herself no matter like what life tries to throw at her. And I love the love. And she is, I guess she never really categorizes herself, but if I as an outsider would, I would probably say she's bi she did love one male character and then she falls in love with a female one 
and that love is what is like a really sustaining and humanizing part of her. I feel like I'm doing such a bad job. This is just a series where you have to read it. You have to read it and then you'll understand where I'm coming from. All right, so that's my top books of the year. Let me know what you think. I would love, love, love to hear what you think on this. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.